Leader of the Afenefere, Chief Ayo Adebanjo, speaks with BBC News Pigeon on the recent attack on the private residence of Sunday Adeyemo, popularly known as Sunday Igboho, by men of the State Security Services, SSS, among other issues. You have seen what is going on. He responded, yes, and it is sad. It's a sad day for me and the entire Yoruba land. Immediately I saw the video, I wrote a statement because the incident reminded me of the Sani Abacha days when Nadeko and Afenifere were opposed to his administration and he decided to kill all of us. They attacked the houses of Nadeko members. They bombed the houses of General Alani Akin Arede. They killed Chief Alfred Rowane and even attempted to kill Baba Abraham Adeshaya. Some of us then could only escape narrowly. So when I heard this recent attack, I said this couldn't have come except by a decisive action. And I've been saying it before that General Buhari's administration has a hidden agenda to fulanize this country. Now from the statement that we heard today, the DSS said they had information that Sunday Igbo had arms in his house. But to be fair enough, they ought to go there and issue a search warrant to him and do their job. Even if there's something you have to find in the house, does this mean that you have to break into his house? That shows the evil intention they have to kill everyone there. Is that the job of a democratic government? If you have a criminal, you go and arrest and prosecute him, and then you allow the law to take its course in a country that operates by a constitutional democracy. Yes, they might say they have some information, but remember that this was how they killed about eight 100 Christians on Christmas Eve in December 2018 in Southern Kaduna. It is on record. At that time, he sent a vice president to stop the crisis that was happening in the region. But the following day, the killing of Christians happened. But the president never sent the army and the DSS after the culprits. That is the killers of Christians. After that, they went to Aguta in Benue and killed about 800 people there too. But Governor Samuel Autumn went to General Buhari for help. He told him that he knew the attackers. Autumn even showed the president the letter they brought, claiming that they owned Benue land. But the president never sent the DSS and the army after the assailants. He did not even declare the leaders of the gang wanted. For years, we've been crying that these Fulani headsmen are carrying arms and AK-47 rifle, but nothing has been done to them. We have told him many times how these people wreak havoc in the whole of the country, kidnapping, raping, depriving farmers of their lands. All this why that we've been shouting, he regarded our cries as those of opposition. But now the whole governors in the south, both from the APC and PDP, came out with the declaration that the unrest in their state is as a result of the Fulani headsmen doing open grazing and the passed a law that it should be stopped. Then they asked the president for a dialogue to stop all these things, but he just ignored them. Instead, he said he was going to bring back the old law, which all the lawyers in the country have said doesn't exist. They asked him to produce the Gazette, but he gave nothing. They told him that open grazing is causing insecurity. He said anyone talking about restructuring should forget it. That is the cause of the problem now. And I say that the president is not interested in a united Nigeria in peace. He's only pursuing Fulani domination. It is unfortunate. Even some elements I respect, like the Sultan of Sokoto, recently said in the newspaper that there is freedom of movement throughout Nigeria, in the market and in the forest. You see that as opposing what Akere Dolo said in driving away armed Fulani headsmen from Ondo, that they are occupying his forest reserves. Buari is now being backed by the Sultan, encouraging the people, the Fulani headers, that they have the freedom to go anywhere in Nigeria, and there is no forest in the north. All this is just to show you that the game plan is to fulanize Nigeria, not to have everyone together in peace. And the people say that they are asking for restructuring. Say it for peace. All we are saying is send us back to federalism that we had at independence. This federalism we're talking about was agreed to by the founding fathers of this nation. The Sudana, Azikiwe, Awolowo, I mean, living witness, they had the agreement in 1954 in London. It was partially implemented in 1957 when the East and the West were granted independence with their constitution written separately. These are backgrounds that we had.
They should tell you we are now on that stage in the West. I'm sure you must have read or listened to the statement of the DSS in which they accused Mr. Sunday Go of stockpiling arms, citing this as the reason they raided his home, which led to the killings. What do you make of that? His response was that this is arrant nonsense. Is that how to do a constitutional democracy invading someone's house in the middle of the night? The dictatorial tendency of this administration has been long. That was the way they invaded the houses of judges that they said were looking for corrupt judges. I'm not saying they couldn't do this, but there is a democratic procedure that ought to be followed. Take a look at when he ordered the military to shoot at sight. I criticized Buhari. Then such is not done in a democracy because it is a reckless statement to kill off the opposition. When they killed me now and said they found an AK-47 gun with me, who would bear my witness? Can a dead man talk? And again, whatever arms you say this man Igbo is carrying, have you meted out the same treatment to the Fulani people wreaking havoc on us? That is a partisan and nepotistic way of bullying this country. I've given you the instance of Autumn that begged for the president to help save his people from attackers, but Buhari didn't send the army to defend these people. That is the point I'm making. Why is it only on Igboho, who has been known to be clamoring for self-government for his people? He has his own nature. He may be wrong, but I don't agree with violence. But all he has been saying is give us independence. Is there no freedom of movement and association in this country? If Igbo has committed any crime, as they have alleged, that is not the way to prosecute him because it is not the way the President Buhari has acted with people who are his ethnic nationality who are accused of similar things. Mind you, this is what Dan Juma said before, that the government is doing that what the government is doing is ethnic cleansing, coming out in various ways. When bandits are rampaging the people of Southern Kaduna and the Agutos, the man didn't do anything because the attacked people were not Fulanese. But when all these people reacted on their own, he said they were attacking the Fulanese. But it doesn't address the action that are causing the reactions. Even when they said they found arms in his house, they have forgotten that this was a man who knows that when the Fulani attack him and his people, you will turn a blind eye to them. So he prepared himself for the people that he knew would come to attack him and would not be apprehended. So that response is not the best act from the DSS because that is not how they have been acting. Even when Autumn went to the president, not once or twice to plead that headers are killing his people and driving them out of their lands. President never acted as he did. Boko Haram has been attacking the people, yet the president didn't act the way he just acted. But it is the local people who are resisting his tyranny that he has been actively fighting against. He acted very decisively to arrest Kanu, who out of the oppression in the country calls for self-determination for his people. His tribe has been largely excluded from the government, which is obvious. The Buhari plan is deliberate, and that is why the security architecture in the country is dominated by the Fulanese. And that is also why he has refused to change his attack on the opposition and critics. Speaking on the rearrest of Kanu, the leader of IPOP, we had an interview with the governor of Kaduna State, Malam Erufai, where he said that the bandits don't have a centralized leader like IPOP and shouldn't be compared with the Eastern group. How would you react to this? He's just speaking trash. I've given you instances of Autumn, a governor of a state whose people were attacked and displaced. He came to the president and said at the least of attackers. But the president turned a blind eye. It is a pure deliberate action. And even on the question of the open grazing that is causing the whole confusion now, the entire governors, including those in the north, condemned the act. But the president said no, that he has a law which has now encouraged attackers to go about with their arms more. That's how you look. You should look at it. There's no even dispensation of justice to all the alleged criminals in the country. Now he's dealing with Igboho, but has he dealt with the Fulani herders like that despite the open evidence? And can he explain why all the security architecture of the country is in the hands of the Fulanis? Even when the whole governors from the south ask for some protection to have their own state police, the president said they can't carry arms. Yet the police... The people, the state policemen, will fight against their carrying arms. 
you can't see that it's been all a game and the president buhari has a global intention to fulanize nigeria when he came to power in 2015 and people were shouting that those attacking them are fulanese buhari said no the attackers are not fulanese but when the whole crisis became full-blown and glaring for all to see, he came back and said, though the attackers are Fulani, they are not those of Nigeria, which means they are foreigners. And then I asked, how did the foreigners enter our country? He's the number one security officer in Nigeria, who is in charge of even the security of our borders. So he can't say he doesn't know how the foreigners came in. Even they came in and were discovered to be foreigners. Will you not say that because they are foreigners, you can't arrest them? Even when they are criminals, even when the governor of Niger State cried out that the attackers have invaded his areas, chased away the local government and hoisted their own flag in place of the national flag, Buhari being commander-in-chief of the country, said nothing. These are all open evidence, except if anybody wants to deny them. If you would remember vividly, that the last time I spoke on this issue, I said I don't support succession and I don't oppose it either. And this is because the agitation of, of those calling for succession is based on what Buhari is doing now to our people. And it is the youth who are suffering from unemployment, police oppression and discrimination under Buhari. And the power the president is using to oppress us is from the constitution, which was imposed on us by the military. It was General Abdul Salami Abu Bakr, a military man that wrote this constitution. He's still alive and can't deny this. We then said, if you don't want to go back to the constitution, we all agree to. Let us have a dialogue to agree on what to do. But the president refused. The entire southern governors called for the same dialogue because we are all peaceful people. But what has been given rise to the like of Igbo and Kano is the president's refusal to peaceful dialogue. I've told him many times that if Nigeria is restructured back to federalism and we have our state police and local government autonomy, all the agitations will die down. But has he considered such an idea? He keeps negotiating with bandits, encouraging them to collect ransom, but he can't negotiate with citizens who are clamoring for justice. If you are really sincere, these are the issues you should examine. The president cannot tell us that we want to break this country because it is not possible. We, the Yorubas, particularly have invested and fought for the unity of this country. When the crisis came in 1953, the northern governor said they were no longer interested in being part of Nigeria. It was Chief Awolowo who convinced him to come back to the federation and that if we had a federal constitution, they would have the autonomy and all regions would develop their own at their own pace. And this was what we had at independence until the military did its subject. This is how you should examine our problem. In fact, the international community should look at that and find out whether we are just agitators or legitimate people clamoring for peace. Wari is just bamboozing everyone, saying, if you do this, you don't want Nigeria. But he's the one provoking everybody to war. And all he's doing now is intentional. He wants to provoke the West and other parts of the country to react so that he can declare a state of emergency, which will definitely extend his tenure as it won't allow any election. If it is not so, why is he reluctant to have a dialogue?